Good day, Brutal Planet listeners. This is Eric Peterson in Salt Lake City today. And today I have the honor to be joined by guitar legend George Lynch. How are you doing today, George? Very good. Good. Well, this is my last interview, so. <sighs> oh, it's your last one? Couple of weeks, yeah. Well, last one for today. Yeah. So my mornings are usually, you know, got four to six of yeah. these every morning. And, uh, they come with uh, various. Uh, challenges you know yeah uh, in the age you know because back in the day interviews were you know you sit down with someone yeah you know people would fly you to new york or la and, and you and you'd go to the record company and sit in a conference room and you'd actually or they'd come to the show or sit on the bus with a microphone and a pad of paper i never do that anymore yeah so then it began phone calls yeah phone calls are cool and then that then and then then it became skype and then it turned into zoom and now it's a mix of all of those yeah yeah it can be challenging so so where are you joining us from today uh southern california nice nice beautiful southern california uh, i know a lot of people don't speak highly of california for, for some reason but and i get it but man there's a reason why a lot of people live here yeah and i'm as we're talking about earlier and we'll continue to talk about you know i'm a big fan of a uh, big backpacker and kind of overlander and nature explorer guy you know we're always out hiking and camping and doing all that kind of stuff and doing that way all my life um but i spent most of my formative years in los angeles you know in, in southern california area growing up and working and you know turning you know into a rock musician and yeah you know am i successful one arguably and uh and so all my formative years were spent here and uh so this feels like home to me but man i tell you when the rest of the world is kind of freezing or whatever it's going through it's really nice to live in los angeles <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'll bet especially I'll as bet. i've gotten older i was just like oh my god you know it's it's today's 82 degrees i've got the beach that way i've got the mountains that way i've got the desert that way yeah lots of options yep. and always something to do and someplace so you know, as long as I can escape, yeah, frequent, I'm good. And we don't live in Los Angeles or Hollywood yeah. or the Valley. We we're out a little bit, so we're you know surrounded by hills and trails and dirt roads, and so we we can get away pretty easily. Good. So the End Machine is set to release their aptly titled uh, second album called Phase Two on April 9th. Was the recording of that album modified due to COVID at all, or did you have to? It we was. we recorded the album the same way we we're doing this interview. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was actually uh, that 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 all occurred. Uh, everything changed while Jeff and I were working together. Uh, we we started working together as we traditionally do at at uh, either his studio or my studio. We live a few miles from each other, and his studio is set up a little better than well, a lot better than mine. He's got a a much more pro setup, you know. Um, so we tend to work over there uh, a lot. And, uh, and, you know, I was getting increasingly uh, less comfortable uh, being there, you know, with everything as things started to heat up. Yeah. And, get, and I just it started to stress me out a lot. I just, Jeff, I just think I, I can't do this anymore. I think I'm going to have to find a different way. So we figured it out. It took us a couple of days. But I got to say, I've done probably – three records since then, since, you know, March of last year and, uh, the end machine being one of them. And, uh, it's gone really well. It's been really, uh, very productive and it works. It's wonderful. I mean, it's not ideal, yeah, but it works. And, um, one thing I like about it is you can be less distracted because in a normal studio environment, whether it's a professional studio or a home studio, you got your wife coming in and ask you, you know, did you feed the dog or you mm -hmm. go pick up the trash and take out the trash or the kids coming in or, you know, the dog running through biting your heels while you're trying to play a solo. I mean, I've literally <laughs> had that happen. Yeah. You know, somebody gets, is getting a phone call or, Hey, I got to stop, you know, whatever, you know, or, or you're interacting, you know, which is nice, you know, but you're telling stories going down, you know, uh, you're going down to memory lane and all of a sudden mm -hmm. some, it's just, you know, somebody comes by to visit, you know, all these things, but with the working remotely, none of that really happens. You know, you're, you're really just laser focused on getting it done. And we've been very productive 
using it in uh, that process. So do you see it as something you could do in the future more often? I'm fine with it. Nice. I'm fine with it. I mean, I'm almost have a little trepidation about going back to the old way of like working together in a room just because it's been a while. Just like I feel, I feel that way as well about playing live. Mm -hmm. I did one, I've only played one uh, out, out once since this all happened. And that was uh, for a corporate event in Florida that I do usually once, once at least once or twice a year. And, uh, it was kind of a test, and so I went out. I didn't fly; I drove, believe it or not. But I was already out in uh, out in Nashville, anyways. Um, I have family out there, and I was working with Rave and Cake. Some we're, we're doing some pre-production, but um, it was weird, you know, playing live again. It, it, it I felt a little disembodied and not really confident. Yeah. Uh, so I miss, so that was scary. So I, I know I have to get back in the saddle with, with live performing, but as far as recording, um, uh, I don't know. I, I have to feel like I have to relearn some of the, to get confident again. And, yeah. And, and it'll yeah. be fine, but take a little bit of reacclimation. Yeah. So the phase two has amazing variety of songs on it, um, from a guitar aspect. And it seems to have a lot of bluesy elements in it. Was that something you intended on it from the beginning? Um, you, you mean the, the new record? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I think it had kind of less of all those things uh, compared to the first record. Oh, really? Uh, but I mean, I always have a blues element. Yeah. In my writing just because that's where I come from. But, uh, the, uh, the idea, the overarching idea in, in, in uh, just the idea that we had as far as how we're going to write this record and what we're trying to achieve was that we were going to put ourselves in the mindset of, uh, of, of where we were when we would sit down to write in the 80s. Oh, okay. Know, and, and, and we had forgotten some things about how we used to write, and, and we had to re-remember them. And one of those things is be very, very hook-oriented, Another thing was like really look at the record as a whole, as a balance and create a whole story with you. Make sure you got your ballad. You make sure you got your, your double bass, yeah. fast, speedy song. You make sure you got your guitar solo vehicle song with an extra long guitar solo, ridiculously long guitar solo. And then <laughs> our, our, uh, you know, and then we have a, 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 make sure that we put it all up on the board. We've got all the different uh, tempos, a variety of tempos, a variety of keys, uh, so there's this, you know, this is balance that we think makes sense on paper, you know, and then make the songs accessible, not try to, not try to show how smart we are, not try to challenge the listener or ourselves too much. There's nothing, you know, that's what, that's just, what is that? That's just showing off or something. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Or being bored, or trying something new, but let's just stick to what we know, like, give people what they want. How about like, if we were a company, we're making a product, we're making a widget, give people the widgets they want. Yeah. What's wrong with that? So you know, I do a, a lot of different projects that are different. So I've got those, you know, but this is not that. This is giving people the meat and potatoes that they were sold to begin with, you know, so we didn't, didn't want to change Coke. Do you, do you find when you do another project that people expect it to be Doc and Ish? And does that, how does that feel to you? Does it make you angry? Like, you know? Well, it, you know, when that, when I started to first realize that that was a, a blowback I would be getting when I do projects that were a little left to center than what people normally know me for. Yeah. Uh, it was, I never expected that kind of reaction from people. I always thought that music appreciators would appreciate uh, the, ex the journey, you know, of the artists that they, that they, that they like, you yeah. know, that they would like, wow, what's Prince going to do now? Or what is Queen going to do now? Or what is Hendrix going to do now? Yeah. Yeah. It takes, it's takes some getting used to, you know, like when Zeppelin two came out, I was disappointed <laughs> when, when Jeff Beck put out his third, you know, rough and ready after truth and Beck Ola, I was like, I didn't like it, you know? Uh, and there's a lot of examples of that in my, 
formative years uh, with listening to music that I like, I wanted everybody to be simple blues based, blues based, riff based. And when I started getting more adventurous, like what's this cashmere shit? Yeah. You know, I was like, now of course it took me 30 years to catch up and I'm like, shit, you know, now I even like bands I used to hate like ELO and stuff. I was like, this stuff's amazing. These guys are geniuses, you know? Uh, and I can cite dozens of examples of that as well. So I'm not saying I'm a genius. I'm just saying that, I'm just not the kind of guy that puts out the same shit over and over again. Not that that's bad. Works for ACDC. I was, that's funny you said that. I was just going to say, I, at some point, I'm sick of hearing Back in Black Part 4, 5, and 6. Yeah. But would you want, you know, do you want your ACDC to play something completely exactly. unexpected? Exactly. It would never happen. No. So they're ultra conservative. And I think that starts to blend into your life philosophy and your worldview. I'm not a conservative person. I'm a very progressive person, a liberal person. And on that way with my music, I look at life like an adventure and I want to evolve. Yeah. It may not be better. It's not even a matter of better. Better isn't a word. It really applies to the discipline of what I'm doing. It's really an adventure and a journey and an exploration. It's magical and it's intriguing and interesting and, challenging and all that stuff but it's what it isn't what i don't want it to be is where i punch in the clock at the factory and punch out widgets exactly exactly so do you you, do you see this this album as you see it as a moving forward for you and in, in part of your journey then well you know this record is not on a, it, it, i don't think it's on a trajectory of a, of a linear timeline it's really i think it's a safe record it's 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 rediscovering safe harbor yeah i guess is yeah. kind of how i like to look at it and there's nothing wrong with that you know yeah maybe i'm not acdc and just keep put, putting out the same you know like version of the same song over and over again um and it's i'm like i'm the biggest acdc fan in the world uh but uh, th there's nothing wrong with doing that sometimes because it is the core of your, what you've sold people. And really, yeah. if you look at it, it's a, a part, it's a creative thing. It's a, it's a, it's an artistic endeavor, but at the same time, it's also a commercial thing. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing to be ashamed of when people are like, I'm an artist. I'm not, well, no, no, no. It's an exchange of energy and that's life. And it's most fundamental, essential, basic thing. That's exchange of energy is what makes life life <laughs> yeah exactly uh you know and uh that's commerce and uh i do something for you you do something for me and and that's how it works and this and, and i'm proud of that and i work really hard at what i do and uh i take pride in what i what i do i think i'm creating something of value for someone yeah so if someone rejects it yes i do take it personally it hurts but i'm also a musician so i get it because you cannot be in this business and have thin skin. Exactly. You know, the rejection is just, I mean, it's woven into the fabric of what we do, you know, and uh, you cannot take it too personally. You love your, what you create. You're, you're like your children, you know, so if you, somebody doesn't like your kids, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're very, you know, defensive, but I've learned to not be defensive and understand that, like you can't be all things to all people all the time. It's yeah. just not. Yeah. Just do the best you can do and enjoy the journey. Um, yeah, people like it. They like it. If they don't, oh, well. They're well lost. So, speaking or, of the journey, I wanted to ask you, I've talked to both Don and and Jeff about this, but I'm curious back back in the day when you guys were recording um, the, the video on the back of the truck for It's Not Love. Yeah. I, they all kind of had a different recollection on it. I just was curious. Did you ever feel like you were going to fall off the back of that semi driving down the oh, street? You don't understand. That's the number one thing I remember about it. It's very difficult to stay standing on the back of a flatbed truck while it's moving <laughs> and, and guitar, really. So all the gear was strapped down, you know, triple strapped down with all these different tie downs and everything and, and uh, come alongs and all that stuff. And, uh, still had to have guys hiding behind the stacks, holding everything up. Yeah. But you know, you know, if you're wearing boots, yeah, it was, it was pretty challenging. Uh, 
but it was really cool and magical. We had no idea how cool that was going to be. It was so fun. And and were the, the I mean, you had a permit to do it, correct? Uh, I think so. I'm not sure about that. I think I think we were kind of in the gray area there because we were able to go over shoot over the bridge because that one particular bridge is used for a lot of filmmaking in Los Angeles. Uh huh. Get a permit, or is it the fact that you didn't need a permit to use that particular bridge. Uh, I think everything else we were doing guerrilla style. Oh, were you? Oh, nice. Yeah. So and, and the cops were harassing us, but we kept avoiding them and just kept plowing through until yeah. you know we were getting threatened with you know getting shut down and those kinds of things. But we, we magically were able to pull it off. I think we had to, and when we pulled up to the what was the uh, the whiskey or the rainbow or whatever the hell we pulled up to finally in Hollywood that night. That was the end of the trip. Okay. And at that point we, we had our last shot, you know, we had to get this in one shot because cops are definitely going to show us that. <laughs> we had to work, you, know. you just don't see that kind of stuff anymore. I mean, that's not like, like it was back then. It's, um, it's more tame. I would say as far as even especially like videos go. Everything's more regulated now. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's just hard to go out and do stuff anywhere. Just like we were talking earlier about going camping and backpacking. Yeah. You know, you have to have you know, get on a reservation system site and do it six months in advance and get all these permits for different things. Uh, you need your adventure pass to go into the National Forest. Then you need a wilderness permit. Then you need a fire permit. I was like, what? Yeah. Dude, my day, I mean, I threw on my Boy Scout backpack and some pemmican and a bedroll and a rain poncho and that was it you know my gear cost me 50 bucks yeah now you got to spend five thousand dollars on backpacking gear to go backpacking yeah it's like vortex what <laughs> <laughs> yeah insulate what so uh permits and it just uh so same with with music i mean yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of obstacles now to uh, we don't have the freedom that we had back then. Yeah. But just serious, a lot more people and just can't everybody run around and do everything all the time that they want to do, you know, blowing shit up or whatever. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you a question about um, your role as, as an iconic guitar player from the 80s and possibly of all time. I, I've done a lot of interviews over the, just this year and every one of those interviews listed you as their main influence. Um, I'm the main guy, yeah. Yeah, there's this other guy, but he's dead. His name was Hendrix or something. He was pretty good. And there's a couple other guys, maybe, but they, they I influenced them too. I'm sure. <laughs> how does it? Like but how does it? Guy. How does it make you feel to think that you're doing? You were doing something then, and you're doing something now that shapes people's lives. I mean, well, I mean, I, uh, it's impossible. You can't ever see yourself the way people see you. I mean, yeah. From my perspective, I mean, my, 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 my kids, my wife, or I was just say this, like, because once in a while they'll run into somebody and they'll go, oh, your dad's George Lynch. And they'll go, oh, that's really cool. And they're like, it is? <laughs> and, and it, you know, we, we don't think like that. I mean, all we're doing is just leading our lives yeah. and doing our yeah. work and doing what, what comes natural to us, you yeah. know, and that's it. You know, it's not like we think from that angle, you know, it's just yeah. not something that enters into our mind. I don't, under, you know, I can't really comprehend that because I mean, I mean, in, in a way though, I mean, I mean, I feel that about people that I admire, you know, like I met Jeff Beck a couple of times. I mean, pff, dude, I cried, you know, I mean, it was, um, I mean, it was very emotional to me and, and, and powerful, you know, moment in my life. You know, I didn't know what to say to him, but I get it. Um, uh, so yeah, you know, but then again, I understand being a musician myself, how it feels for these people, how they just don't, what can they do, you know, and what can they say to you that will make any difference or yeah, your, you know, your, the way that you appreciate them. I mean, they're just being them, you know, and I feel actually sorry for the people that, get approached like that. Like, let's say Jeff Beck, you know, I, I was just like, you know, he's kind of getting through his day. He has his things to do and he's got his challenge in his life. And, you know, and, 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 and you know, here's got some guy coming along and putting this responsibility on him to sort of acknowledge his, his feelings about him. And it, it's like, 
okay, well, I'm glad that you like what I do, but what can I do? (laughs) (laughs) It's it's kind of a weird thing. I don't know how to even explain it, but it's just like, I don't know. I know people feel compelled to to, uh, say nice things and appreciate that, but at the end of the day, the fact that, you know, you're getting that thing that you enjoy is really all there is, Yeah, you know? That's, that's, you know, I don't think there's, you know, people that appreciate your music or your art are just another side of the same coin. They both mm-hmm. need each other. They're both just as active in the process. And I think eventually, um, you know, I'm thinking of like, uh, in terms of, let's say a futurist, like a Kurzweil or, well or somebody like, you know, eventually those, those, those lines of differentiation and demarcation will be gone and the the innovator and the creator will be and the appreciator will be one and the same mm-hmm. yeah. technology will make that happen you know you, you'll be able to conceive of some you you don't know how to play an instrument but computing power quantum computing power will allow you to realize uh, uh, and create your own personal music yeah. you know or or, or whatever it is, anything that you can conceive of or mash together. <laughs> and it's already happening, obviously, you know. I mean, you know, like I have this Akai MPCX, you know. I mean, yeah, you can do that kind of stuff mm-hmm. with processing power. But, yeah. Uh, eventually, you know, I mean, we've seen, you know, uh, you know, the age of, of rock stars and superstars and, and all that sort of thing kind of go the way of the dodo bird. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. So now what's, what's just think of the, how that trajectory, what's the final culmination of that trajectory. Yeah. Know? It's, it's the elimination of that and a whole different a paradigm shift and a whole new world of, of just the, 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 the creator is the, the innovator is no different than the person Utilizing the innovation, yeah, you know, and the same. So, so I, I I saw an interview with you last year, and you were asking, you were you basically say, asking if Judas Priest needed any help with Glenn Tipton, you'd be glad to to help out. Have you heard anything from them or any follow up on that? Uh, well, no. Uh, Do we need to well, throw it out to the metal gods themselves and say? That George is willing to help if you guys need it. <laughs> yeah, you're pay me, and, and, and I'll, I'll wear a, a disguise and I'll wear Glenn's outfits. No, uh, no, there was a there was a little thing got brought up about that, but that's uh, uh, what it is. Is is it was uh, Priest is a is a British band. Yeah, you got to be British to be a priest. <laughs> But that's kind of the back line. That's not the front line. So yeah. the front line guy's got to be British. Okay. Just, All right. Yeah. I might, where I actually have, uh, my, my son-in-law is the other guitar player. Uh, Richie? Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. He's married to my daughter, my middle daughter. And so that was a funny thing we joked about once in a while. Okay. Just kind of cool. You know, we kid around about it. It's like, you know, since I'm older than him and his father-in-law, you know, it's like, I get to like, you know, do I get to take more of the solos? Well, that, that's fine. I, that's just, I, I never, I didn't know that. And so at first I was thinking, is, is he playing an April Fool's joke on me? Oh, it is. Is it April? It Fools? is April Fool's today. <laughs> Good, that would be a good April Fool's joke. I have to think of something better. Yeah, yeah. I think something. So, lastly, I wanted to ask you about some of the other projects you have coming up. You, uh, what do you have? I mean, this is coming out on April 9th. What else is is George working on? Uh. uh There's one project I really want to ask you about. It's- we were real quick to go back uh, uh, to the end machine real quick, and you brought up the Judas Priest thing. 
I actually had written some songs that were sort of intentionally plagiarizing Priest because I'm a huge Priest fan. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so Electric Eye and I did a couple of, so uh, there's a couple of songs on the end machine that are pretty straight rips. And I don't mind saying, and I'm kind of proud of it, that I was intending to kind of throw a priest if that thing ever actually happened or something. Like, <laughs> you're going to say, see, listen, I, I've, I've, I've got it. I've, I've got it figured out. I go, I know your guys' mold. I know what to do. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, there's even, a, there's even a, oh, a song, it's a Blood and Money, that has the electric eye line in it. Oh, yeah, there, that's true. I, I didn't even think of that. Yes, you're right. Um, uh, but I'm sorry, uh, your question was about other preacher projects. So yeah, the here. banishment. I, I just heard about that one. Mm. We were in here working the other night. Um, it's been, uh, that project is seven years in the making. Wow. And, uh, we had Tommy Victor in the, in the band for a while. We had uh, uh, Mandy Lyon in the band for a while. We are now settled on Devix, who's phenomenal. So it's Devix, Hayes and myself. And, uh, and we've got videos. We've got this record just right there. And, uh, oh, hold on, hold on. Babe, I'm in the middle of an interview. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs> uh, see what I was saying about Yeah, that? working at home and yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, anyways, uh, that record is is almost, I mean, we're that close. And, and we've really, man, we've... <sighs> We could have written 12 records in the amount of time with the amount of effort we put in. So it's really fucking great. I mean, it's, it's, it's a different animal. It's going to piss a lot of people off. I'm sure or whatever. They'll hate it, but whatever. I don't care. I mean, I do care. I wish they all love it, but they should. God damn it. Fuckers. <laughs> but it's not the dream warriors. <laughs> yeah. It's got some, Oh, it's definitely the dream warriors. I mean, okay. call it, uh, uh, fuck, what do we call it? Dream punk. Oh, okay. So it's, is a dream punk and uh, there's some stuff on there there's this one song where Hayes and I we were like let's write a Sade song so it's industrial but with Sade okay figure that out and now we got Devix who's punk it's gothic punk dark whatever angst ridden vocals it's crazy dude it's just fucking nuts very heavily layered very thick and interesting and a lot to listen to because uh, so we've spent so much time on it, we just reinvented it so many times. Then I've got, um, that'll be out this year, I think. And then I've got uh, uh, an instrumental record I, I finished last year mm -hmm. called Seamless. And that'll be out this year, this summer. Um, I'm just slowly started working on KXM4. Uh, I'm going to go back out to Nashville in a couple of weeks, continue to work with Ray on that. We got a few songs written. Um, that'll be in the can sometime this year and I'm working on uh, I'll be working this fall I start to work on uh, the third Sweet and Lynch record nice nice so going back I just want to go I sorry I didn't want to go I wanted to go back to the banishment you got Tommy Victor singing on a couple songs correct yeah yeah that'll be like bonus tracks nice and it came out really good so nice Nice, a well, special added bonus thing. That's cool. I'm I'm excited to hear that. What's the? What, can you tell me the name of the Sade song so that I can at least like when it comes out, I can go. Oh, that's that song. Uh, it was called Reunion. Uh -huh. but I think Devix changed it, and I'm not sure. Okay. Thing is, these titles have all gone through so many changes that we probably have six titles on every single song. You know, multiply that by twelve songs, you get eighty different titles. I can't keep track of them, but. We got some pretty sick titles that we were just, it's like we just dropped a bunch of acid and got drunk and came up with all this. <laughs> that's what they sound like. Yeah. You know, I mean, life begins at rape. I mean, I don't think we'll stick with that one, but yeah. there's, a, there's actually an idea behind that, which is very progressive and positive and about women's rights, you know, and, and mm -hmm. owning their own bodies. You know, it's, it's, it's um, the real pro-life, not the fake pro-life. Yeah. That's the idea behind it. But the name is pretty harsh, so I don't think we'll stick with that. But we've got, yeah, a lot of really crazy, crazy songs, crazy titles, and, and, and we'll definitely take some fucking gnarly left turns with this record. Uh, uh, we get this other one. It's just like a fucking shit kicker song, but it's like 
but but industrial shit kicking. Yeah. God, now yeah. you're now you're I mean you're really pumping this. I'm really excited to hear it. Is uh, hopefully this year, hopefully. It's nuts and the fucking and it's brutal. I mean, there's some brutal shit in there. I mean, I get it. I'm I'm an older guy, legacy guy, I'm not a sugar, but it's for me, it's pretty fucking epic and majestic, you know. It's just dark. Yeah. I love, love dark music, so. Well, that's part of the journey. I mean, it you, like it's it's not what people are class, classically trained to hear from you. So that's part of your journey though. And that's what makes it cool. There was always, when you think about it, there's always these elements in our songs in the eighties. I yeah. mean, you know, heaven comes down, uh, you know, some of these intros like without warning and unchain the night stuff, you know, there, there was some darkness there. Yeah. You know, it was implied. Um, what we couldn't really do very successfully in the docking years was really the blues element because yeah. Bam was just so ultra white, especially Don. Well, I don't think his voice lent to a bluesier sound anyway. I don't think it was, it didn't, no. Right. I didn't, I didn't really, and that's a natural part of what I do. So I didn't really, wasn't able to, you know, express that very successfully in Dokken, but I was in Lynch Mob. Yeah. It was just, you know, we built the band that way. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, George, I'm, ex I'm excited. And now I'm even excited for, really excited for the banishment so i mean there's a couple songs out there yeah yeah but I, I just want to hear the whole thing from start to finish yeah 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 believe me working on it every day i'm trying to get it out there it's just hard it's a hard sell man you know people don't want to hear you do good shit they just want to hear you do the same old same old yeah old. yeah well, I appreciate your time well, and talking it'd be it'd, uh, you know i could get it out there yeah exactly exactly or i could just Flip docking around backwards and call it neck on. There you, there you go. That would be right down the death metal era. Right there. That's a good we'll death. Thing, change his name to Nod, yeah. which is dock backwards. Nod neck on. <laughs> oh my God. This is working out. I'm glad we had this conversation. Exactly. Exactly. Guidance. Well, I, so I just want to say to everybody and to you, since it's April Fool's Day, congratulations on. Uh, Becoming what the second guitar player for Judas Priest, right? Well, actually, I'm the third guitar player. Okay. Oh, you're going to do an Iron Maiden style and have three guitar players. I have a bench, right? Yeah. It's like a foot game, like, right? and if somebody goes down, like all these guys are getting older and they yeah. pass out, you know, and shit, trip over a cord, get electrocuted or something, you know, then I run out. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Towel around me. I got my Gatorade bottle. Yeah. Know. The yeah. coach tells me to go out. I run out. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Breaking the law. Breaking the law. Yeah. So we just we just figured it out. So. Yeah. Well, that's April Fool's for sure. Exactly. Exactly. I don't want that coming back to anybody. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll be all over the, the tabloids that George decided. I'll tell you what. I I do have a little bit of my DNA, musical DNA, on the new Judas Priest record because last time I was out there visiting, uh, uh, with them. With my family and Regine and, and the baby, uh, I left him with my old Soldano from Wicked Sensation. Oh, okay. And he used that on the New Judas Priest record. Like that's his primary amp. Loves it. Oh, okay. On the one on the last one, the Lightning Strikes album, or the new the one? one? The one they're working on now. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay, there so, you go. So I'm kind of in Judas Priest. Yeah, yeah, you are. Sort of amp wise. Yeah. Hey, take it any way you can get it. Oh, yeah. I'll start with that. Yeah. So we'll build from there. Yeah. Baby steps. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks again, George. And I appreciate your time. And it's been amazing talking to you. You as well, man. I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoy the backdrop and all the other stuff we got to talk about around music. I hope yeah. you're able to do some of that because I think it's uh, interesting. Interesting.